What's up idols? It's CC Lesson 3. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Before we start, before we dive in, immediate disclaimer. I remember what happened the last time I talked about this. I just want to start by saying for those of you who prepared to hate watch this video, downvote the video and go down below and leave hateful comments. Thank you. All engagement is good engagement. It helps spread and share the video. That's what the algorithm wants to see, engagement. Even the most hated videos go viral. All aboard the toxic gossip train. So in doing so, you will be helping me get the word out about this creep and protect other people. You might be wondering what I'm talking about at this point. Back in 2020, I did a video about a YouTuber in Korea who was caught in a viral TikTok video, literally putting on his pants and his underwear back on because he was naked from the waist down Winnie the Pooh style because he had just tried to a girl. That's right, ladies and gents, we're revisiting the Dao Kim drama. The reason I'm doing this is because there's been a lot of updates since we last talked about this. I'm still getting comments, hateful comments directed at me, victim blaming comments, people defending him. And also there's still girls telling me like, I was just in the club and I met him, this is what happened. So if you don't know who he is, I highly recommend you check out this video I did four years ago. I'll link it down below. I'll also put it up here. But if you want a background story into who Dao Kim is, I recommend you watch this video. It'll also be linked down below in the description. But for the sake of this video, I'll try to do a quick TLDR. So back in 2019, there were two friends who flew to South Korea and they were hanging out in Hongdae. Fresh off their flight, jet lagged, but excited to be in Hongdae and wanted to go out, club in, enjoy the nightlife. There were two women. While they were out in the clubs, they were approached by a Korean guy, Dao Kim, formerly known as J Kim, I don't, whatever. <laughs> One of the friends, she was tired. Jet lag had taken over. She decided to go back to the guest house, their Airbnb, and go to sleep, understandably. The other friend decided to hang out with Dao Kim. And in the video that I made, there's his video confession there's the video of him putting his own pants back on and underwear back on. There's screenshots of the conversations they've had with each other. There's the police report. Like there's so much evidence against him and it just blows my mind that anyway. So one of the friends, she decided to hang out with him still. He was drunk, so he claims. So she decided to let him come over, sleep on the couch and sober up. They ate together and she thought he was sober when she went to sleep. She goes in her room, goes to sleep, closes the door. The other friend has already been in her room. She's been asleep. She doesn't even know that Dao's there. So the incident did happen in 2019. They posted the TikTok in 2020. I'll get to the reason why in a second. So in the video, and I'm not sure if it's even circulating on TikTok. I don't know if you can see it anymore, but in the video I made, it's there. You can watch it. But you hear two girls crying and they're filming a boy at the bottom of their stairs who is naked, like he has a shirt on, but he's putting his underwear back on, he's putting on his pants, and it's, he's moving slow, like he doesn't care, he's just like. Basically, the friend that had the jet lag and decided to go to sleep early, woke up to him on top of her trying to force himself into her, but he couldn't perform. And yes, they called the police on him. There is a full-blown police report. So put yourself in these two girls' shoes. You go to a foreign country, you're there for a limited time on vacation. If there's a crime committed against you, it's not likely that you can understand the language and the court system and the legal system in this foreign country that you're visiting on vacation. You also may not have the time and financial means to see this all the way through. When they talked to the police, they were under the impression that even if he didn't go to jail necessarily, he would still face criminal punishment. And that's all they wanted. They wanted that, some sort of punishment, be held accountable, and for him to apologize. So he posted the vaguest apology ever on his Instagram. He never acknowledged what he did. He just said there was a situation that happened. I don't want to talk about it. That was his apology. So the reason this video got posted on TikTok in 2020 and not 2019 when it happened, as soon as he deleted the apology post, they decided to post this. They was like, all right, you don't want to own up to what you did. We're going to let the world know what you did. And before it even got to that, there are screenshots of these girls talking to him like, you know what you did, why are you taking this down? Why did you delete the apology? And he was ignoring them, downplaying it, I don't know what you're talking about. So he got called out when this TikTok went viral. He posted an apology, probably what his lawyers told him to say. I think the main thing that <laughs> is hard to talk about, one of the main uh, reasons this news went so viral and uh, it's so sensitive to talk about is religion. Dao Kim is famous for being a Korean Muslim. Now at the time, four years ago, I didn't feel comfortable saying he was faking it. 
I, who am I to question someone's faith or their beliefs, you know? I didn't want to speculate. But since then, since that video, there's been a lot that's come out. Even when I started that video, one of the first things I said was this is not about Muslims in any way. This is about what Dao Kim did. My biggest concern for that video, one, was the victim blaming, which, because that's what everybody does. Two, was people choosing to attack and blame Muslim people. And I know, as an American, there are certain sentiments and thoughts and hate directed towards Muslims, and it's ridiculous. It, it frustrates me. Full stop, I'm not religious at all. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I'm not Jewish. I'm not Muslim. I don't have a religion, so I have nothing to gain in this. So it was kind of a surprise when those same people were telling me that I should be because of what I was wearing. I was wearing an off the shoulder shirt. They were fully blaming alcohol, fully blaming the girls. Very few people wanted to hold him accountable for his own actions. After the TikTok went viral, he decided to post a confession apology video. And in that video, he owned up to everything he did. He said, yes, it's all true. This is what happened, I'm sorry. But he wanted to emphasize the fact that he was not Muslim at the time. And he was Christian then, but because he's Muslim now, it's fine and all should be forgiven. Couple problems with that. When he met these two girls that night, they were also Muslim, I believe. He bragged to them about being Muslim. It's also worth noting, he made many posts on Instagram about the faith he was interested in, about this new way of life he had. And the reason I feel comfortable calling him a fake Muslim, a Korean man who's exploiting a whole religion, a whole group of people's beliefs for views, fame, and popularity is because of what's happened since. It's come out that he had a wife, and one kid at the time, one son at the time, her name's Mia, she has her own YouTube channel. She came out calling him out, saying that he still eats pork, he drinks a lot, he goes out the club, he cheats on her, he abuses her, and he's an absent father. And there's still many people who call him such a good man. Oh, by the way, that whole confession that he made in that video saying, yes, this all happened, I'm so sorry, he decided to pull a whole JK on that. Basically, the new narrative was, yeah, these two girls forced me to say this, Couple questions. One, how can two anonymous girls in a foreign country force a native man in his home country with over two million followers online be forced to do anything by these girls? What power did they have over him to make him confess to something he didn't do, confess to committing a crime he didn't commit? So yeah, a lot has happened since I made that video in 2020. I am still getting comments on that video. Lots of hateful comments, blaming the victims, attacking me for being a woman, attacking me for being not Muslim, attacking me for calling him out. <laughs> but I'm also getting comments from girls saying that he has not learned his lesson. He's still out here doing the same things. In that confession video, he said, well, this happened while I was Christian. I'm Muslim now, so I'm forgiven. I'm a better guy because of it. And that's how most people forgave him. Most of his fans stuck right by him. Back then he had over 2 million followers on YouTube. Now he has over 5 million, so he has not lost a step at all. By the way, I find it really funny that initially when he started his channel, it, he was trying to be a singer. Like that's his background. He wanted to be a K-pop star. Like his first few videos were K-pop covers. He used to sing. That was his thing on YouTube. And when that never really amounted to anything, he allegedly found a group of people, exploited their faith, and became famous for it. There are many Muslims who are K-pop fans and, and love Korean culture, so when they find this attractive this Korean guy who, oh, I'm Muslim, this is my life as a Muslim, as a Korean who's a Muslim, they flock to him. It's, it's a pretty niche category. So yeah, he was able to skirt any sort of accountability, any sort of punishment, any sort of real backlash. I have so many clips and videos to show you guys. We're gonna get to it. But first, this is a comment that made me wanna revisit this dude. I just saw this video now and oh boy, let me tell you something. Last year I was in Seoul for about two weeks and there was this girl I met in my guest house and we always went clubbing together. One night there was this dude who tries to get close to her. I don't even know when it happened, but he just started sticking close to us and also kissed her a few times. He actually told us he's a famous YouTuber and guess who it was? Dao Kim. Ooh. At this point, I've never heard of him before so I knew nothing about him. Anyway, he suddenly also became really interested in me and all I can do is blame the alcohol, but I kissed him back. So both my friends and me were pretty drunk and he kept kissing both of us. We also shared some glances and knew we both kind of wanted to go back to enjoying clubbing and get rid of this dude lol. And then, and then, then he kept pestering us to have a threesome with him. We both said no, but he kept asking, so at one point, me and my friend told him we have to go to the bathroom real quick, and then we'd be back. We did not go back. We took our chance and ran out of this fucking club, because he was so persistent and just would not let us go or let us out of his sight. 
but we did not think too much about it. Just thought he was a weird dude and wanted to get rid of him, but we did not actually think of him as dangerous. The next day, I received an anonymous message on Instagram warning me about Dao Kim with some articles about him, and then I knew. I'm so glad we decided to run away that night because I really don't want to know what could have happened. I'm still shocked thinking about that night. It's the fact that he was able to say his confession was a lie and people believed it that makes me sick. He's like Trump at this point and he knows it. He knows that no matter what crime he commits, no matter how much he lies, no matter how much he exploits his viewers and his fans, they will always be right there by his side. They will defend him, make excuses, and attack anyone else who disagrees. Which is why I said everything I said in the beginning of this video, because of the backlash I got on the last one. That is to this day my most disliked YouTube video, but that also brought it up to be like one of my top five most viewed videos on my channel. So again, thank you for the hate watches, downvotes, and hateful comments. Boy, did his viewers try hard to get that last video I made taken down. I honestly don't know how it's still up after all this time. How is all this out there? known to the public and people are still saying he's such a good man and my thing is again it's been four years since we talked about this so much has happened since then i'm about to show you some videos and clips that have surfaced online since because remember his main defense for almost raping a girl back in the day was he was christian when that happened now he's muslim so he's way better really want to blame that attempt incident on being a Christian and not a Muslim yet that was in 2019 it is 2024 he claims to be fully Muslim now and he's still out in the clubs flirting with girls he's doing a lot of the same behavior he's drinking alcohol he's going clubbing what changed he's doing things that devout Muslims should not do the thing that scares me like the reason I compare him to Trump because even with screenshots between the victims endowed himself even with police reports even with video even with his own confession it's not his fault. It didn't happen. It's the girl's fault. It's the alcohol's fault. The main thing people said that really pissed me off is, well, who invites a guy to their house? You shouldn't be surprised that this happened. For one, the victim, the girl he tried to rape, did not invite him to their house. She was asleep when this happened. It amazes me that we live in a world where when women are sexually everyone finds any excuse to blame any and everything except the person who did it themselves. It's the girl's fault. It's what she was wearing. It's the fact that they were drinking. It's the time of day it happened. She let him on. She shouldn't have been in that situation. Why'd she put herself in that situation? So one of the first things I want to talk about with uh, what's come to light recently, I did see that Dowd, he did like a Q&A somewhat recently, and one of the questions people asked about was his wife and his kids. And naturally he said, oh, it's my personal life. It's my private life. I don't want to talk about that. And that's totally fair you have your right to your privacy. But when you ask Mia what's going on with their relationship, she's been trying hard to divorce him. I don't know if they're officially divorced now, but they've been separated for a while and she's been trying to get rid of him. Yes, we broke up forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> yes, my mental first uh, health is first, so I'm now I'm more healthy than I was before because uh, it was a real uh, toxic relationship for me. Yes, it's so sad. Uh, I think I'm stupid. My friends all told me that I'm stupid because I gave him a chance, but he just threw it away. She even said that he would take trips abroad to avoid showing up to court to prolong the divorce process because he doesn't want to pay her alimony. Okay, guys, don't ask me uh, strange questions. I'm married on the papers, but in Korea, you are maybe ma when you are married in the papers, it's most important than, uh, I don't know, like marriage on the Muslim way or something. This is Korea. I live in Korean way and this is Korean rules. And in the papers, if he's my husband, he's still my husband at first. Second, I'm divorcing. Divorcing process is about a year now, a year. We didn't uh, do our first court because he ran away many times and didn't come to court and always delayed. And this time it will be 
our first skirt this month and I hope I will divorce soon okay and people say like he have to give me enough cash. please go in and people asking me like if he did the bad things to you why are you still his uh, wife ask him why I still he be his wife he don't give me divorce because he don't want to give me the alimony okay alimony is nafka it's the same thing to the kids he gave me uh, only one time this time only because uh, my lawyer said something to him not because he wants and it's not enough it's not money for me it's money for the kids okay they are eating they are wearing the clothes not me she's been getting a lot of hate as well from this people are blaming her for their marriage not working out or when she posted pictures of her bruised arm they said they were fake people asked her why did you leave Dal kim and she said because i don't want to be abused anymore there's videos of him in other countries flirting with girls in the club I just feel like after everything that's happened five years ago now and he hasn't really been held accountable in any way and he's still approaching girls in the clubs and still drinking the same thing could happen again and for all we know there are girls out there who had encounters with him and he tried to force himself on them as well but they just haven't gone public about it because of what happened the last time those two girls received so much hate he's still traveling he's unbothered he's living his life he's growing his fan base still i guess i'm hoping that this video somehow helps to wake up some people i really hope this video helps protect some people because i know a lot of people like to go clubbing in korea a lot of people like to go clubbing period and if you see this dude, just be careful. Because if something does happen to you, despite the evidence, despite the police reports, despite the video, despite the screenshots, despite his own friends post, like the fact that his friends are posting them in the club drinking together and they can do so openly, he knows that no matter what his fans see, we live in an absolute insane world when a grown man can be caught on camera putting on his own underwear and his own pants back on himself like he's he's lucid he's awake he's not unconscious after trying to rape a girl and the girl who was asleep and almost raped, it's her fault it's her friend's fault it's not his fault though i said it before and i'll say it again this whole story has nothing to do with religion a lot of people felt obligated to defend him because they felt like islam was being attacked that has nothing to do with this this is about holding a korean man accountable who happens to be muslim Allegedly. Anyway, that is it. Thanks for watching. If you did, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Annyeong.